President Heine, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad to see you by satellite, and I enjoyed visiting with you earlier in the year. Uh, first question. We're focusing on the impacts of the climate crisis on health, but where the Marshall Islands are concerned, uh, it's not only the health of your citizens, but it's the entire existence of your nation. Can you explain what the threat is that you are facing? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, having me on uh, on this uh, program. It's uh, it's a privilege for the Marshall Islands to participate. Uh, for the Marshall Islands, uh, as you know, we're a low-lying country. We're only about two meters above sea level. So the uh, the IPCC special report that came out on um, on 1.5 degrees Celsius talks about uh, the imminent danger for uh, from sea level rise and uh, for the Marshall Islands, uh, that's about the uh, about the decade away, 2030. We're expected to be underwater, so it is our livelihood. It's the very existence of the Marshall Islands that that's at stake. So you're already getting impacts uh, from severe flooding as the sea level rise continues, but it's also having an effect on your food supply and your fresh water supplies. Is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, in the last uh, couple of years, we've seen uh, frequent droughts, uh, king tides, inundations. Um, all of these have, have real uh, impact on our uh, food supplies, on our food plants, on our drinking waters, and uh, just the ability to, to live uh, a normal life has been impacted by, uh, by all these uh, extreme events. Um, it wasn't like this before, and uh, we're seeing uh, more frequent uh, uh, impacts. And, and, and so we're having to deal with uh, health issues, with educational issues, and, um, and all of these are impacting uh, lives of our people, especially on our outer islands where the, uh, where the droughts are mostly uh, uh, found, especially the northern part of the Marshall Islands. That must have a severe uh, emotional impact on your people, especially the looming threat of forced uh, migration. Uh, I, I don't know quite how to ask this question, but uh, how, are, how, is, how are your people dealing with this e emotionally? Well, um, you know, we talk about uh, migration, and I think uh, many, uh, many people are uh, Moving across board, across borders for various reasons, and uh, it's understandable to see people migrating from one country to another, including from uh, Marshall Islands to the United States. As you know, we have a compact of free association with the United States, and that allows for our people to to come to the United States to live and work. Uh, in the past uh, five or so years. Uh, I guess uh, maybe 10 years, we've seen a lot of people migrating out to the United States for education and for employment. But also, I think there is a threat of, uh, of climate, uh, climate change on people's minds. And, uh, you know, for the Marshallese people, we're very close uh, and have a special connection to our land. And so forced migration by, by climate change is not something we, we, we would welcome. We want to stay in our islands and continue to live as a people and as a culture, uh, staying on our own islands. Well, you're suffering these harsh uh, impacts and you're dealing with them. And I, I certainly admire your personal leadership, not least because even though the Marshall Islands with a small population has one of the lowest uh, level of emissions of greenhouse gases of any nation. But in spite of that, you have set a goal uh, to go to net zero emissions by 2050. H how is your country prepared to hit such an aggressive target? Uh, well, yeah, you're very correct in saying that we have a very minimal contribution to emissions worldwide. I think uh, they're telling us it's 0.00001% or something like that. It's, it's minuscule. But I, I believe that everyone has to uh, take ownership of the climate uh, issue. And so for a small country like the Marshall Islands, we have to do our part. 
And so in, in, uh, in looking ahead, we've uh, worked on our uh, 2050 strategy that looks at uh, getting us to net zero emission by 2050. Uh, this was announced in, um, in, in New York in September. And uh, just recently, when we held our, uh, our virtual summit for the CVF, we also announced our, um, um, our climate target, our new climate target under the Paris Agreement. And, um, and this month, we also passed our uh, energy roadmap. Our cabinet approved our uh, energy roadmap uh, looking towards 100% uh, renewable energy by 2050. Uh, for us, uh, the majority of our emission comes from, uh, from our energy sector. So our energy roadmap uh, is uh, giving us the pathway to work toward uh, net zero emission by 2050. Well, it's I want laid out in our plan. Well, it's an impressive plan. I have seen it, and I also want to congratulate you on your virtual climate uh, summit with the climate vulnerable nations. That was quite an achievement. Uh, I wanted to also ask you: You're the first woman president of the Marshall Islands, and I know that you have paid some attention to the fact that women are, relatively speaking, disproportionately affected by the climate crisis. Tell us how you are empowering women to become climate champions to inspire positive change. Yes, uh, thank you. That's a very good question. Um, as you know, when we uh, organize our uh, virtual summit, uh, we empower a group of uh, uh, climate champions, uh, all made up of women leaders from the international community that have been very active in uh, in looking for climate solutions. Um, and this group has kindly helped uh, the, or kindly helped the Marshall Islands to put on the, to launch the uh, uh, virtual summit. I believe that women have solutions. They're the ones that uh, work with their communities, with their families. When there is not enough water, they're the ones that have to look for water, to uh, look for food, and so they have a lot of solution on, you know, to, to deal with climate change. And sometimes we do not recognize their, uh, the, uh, the important contribution and solutions that they bring to, to climate, uh, uh, climate solutions. And it's important to honor them and also to look for and identify solutions that they come with. Now also uh, the younger generation is stepping up to take leadership. That's certainly true here uh, in California. Uh, it's true in many places around the world, but that's also true in the Marshall Islands, isn't it? Uh, could you repeat that again? I'm sorry, Yo I didn't the, younger, the first part. The younger generation. Here's oh, what, uh, and one, one person I'm thinking of, when we met uh, earlier in the year, I was uh, talking about this wonderful young woman who gave that brilliant spoken word poetry performance at the United Nations and you just very quietly smiled and said, yes, that was my daughter. How is she doing? <laughs> uh, she's doing great, uh, uh, Mr. Gore. Uh, thank you for, uh, for uh, paying attention to the work that she does. But yes, I believe that um, you know, the future generations have, a, have an important role to play. The future is theirs. And in the Marshall Islands, like in Australia and other parts of the world, uh, young people are stepping up uh, to take their role in, in, in looking for solutions for climate, uh, climate change. We do have a number of organizations, youth organizations in the Marshall Islands that are uh, looking to identify solutions uh, for, for climate uh, impacts and climate, uh, uh, yes, climate effects in the Marshall Islands. And uh, Kathy, of course, is one of them, but there are a number of them here, and we're very proud of their contributions. Well, you certainly should be. Now, I, I want to ask a, a practical question. I, I have seen so many images and videos uh, of homes that are in low-lying parts of the Marshall Islands. Of course, the entire country is low-lying, but when the, when the high tides come and when the biggest high tides come, uh, it now brings water right into people's homes. How, how, how do you help those people? Uh, is, is the Red Cross playing a role? Do you, how do you deal with this? Yeah. 
Well, we have a very uh, active Red Cross uh, chapter that has just uh, been um, organized about uh, three years ago now, but they're doing a tremendous job of, uh, you know, preparing people, training our youth and our community people to be able to uh, help other members of the community in severe, you know, in times of uh, severe, uh, um, severe impacts on the on the livelihood of people. Um, so, you know, we're very thankful for for this group. But it's a really important question for us because, as you said, when uh, there is inundation, a lot of homes are uh, washed out. Uh, and so we have a very small budget and we cannot afford to, uh, to build up uh, or repair houses. So this is where we look to the international community to help uh, island countries like the Marshall Islands to deal with adaptation, not just mitigation, but adaptation is very important to us and it's an area that we are beginning to look at because we're seeing uh, more and more um, impact on uh, on homes and our own lands and, and food security. So in order to be able to, uh, to live a normal life, we need to either raise our land or islands. Um, there are many other uh, issues that we have to deal in terms of uh, looking at the kinds of homes that would survive in an environment where water increases and, and gets onto our, our land. Again, uh, financing is very important and, and uh, we're very fortunate that there are um, communities out there that are willing to help. Uh, we've been able to get some funds from the Green Climate Funds to help with our um, coastal management issues, building uh, sea walls and uh, revetment al along the shores of our islands. These are some of the things that we're doing to uh, to make life uh, livable for, for our people. Well, I admire your leadership, uh, Madam President, and your leadership in the international meetings organized by the United Nations. Your voice is heard and respected. Uh, and you have made a big difference. And I thank you very much for all that you do. And thank you for joining us on 24 Hours. Thank you very much.